Let's go find woodsy things and turn them into fairy garden miniatures. Before we get started, I'll tell you the backstory. Mr. Gray Squirrel wasn't invited. He's too much of a suspicious fellow. And of course, the Caterpillar sisters weren't invited. They'll eat you out of house and home. And Mother Bird was just too busy. But the fairy did invite you to tea and cookies in her garden at noon. Hi, I'm Caroline, and I'm inspiring you to imagine, then create your own fairy tale world out of polymer clay with weekly tutorials. I've created a detailed checklist of all the things that you'll need for this project in the description below. I start by looking for an acorn in my backyard. Hopefully all the good ones haven't already been taken. Yes, I'm looking at you, Mr. Suspicious. The acorn teapot. Using a mill file, I sand the bottom of the acorn so it can stand up without wobbling. I'm sure coarse sandpaper would work just as well. I do this before hollowing out the acorn so I can firmly grip it without worrying it will collapse on me. I loosen the cap with my X-Acto knife, then carefully nudge it off. Egads! A worm! I was expecting him to show up. This is why you really don't want to use an acorn for crafts without digging it out first. Eventually those worms will bore through the acorn and your project is ruined. I don't recommend roasting the acorns to kill the worms either. I've researched this to the point of geek status and found that sometimes it works, but usually it doesn't. I cut off the top of the acorn and scoop out the insides till I have a nice hollow shell. Fill that little acorn with bleach water and let it sit a few more minutes. Using my X-Acto knife, I cut out a hole for the spout and the handle. A half circle on the acorn shell and a half circle on the acorn cap. By the way, usually acorn caps are clean and bug free. The bend on a stick will make a good handle for my teapot. I trim it to the right size, and I also pick out a stick to work as the teapot spout. I drill a hole into the spout with my Dremel. I fill my acorn shell most of the way with hot glue and keep my spout and handle in place as it cools. If I were to glue it all in one shot, the spout and the handle will want to wiggle out of place as I fiddle around with a cap, Better to save what sanity I still possess and glue in stages. How to make the polymer clay leaves. I use two colors of Primo polymer clay, one light green and one dark green. I mix them together, not fully, so I get a bit of a marbling effect in the leaf. I use my wooden tool to create veins. Is that what you call those things? Leaf veins? I don't know. I guess whatever works. I sculpt six leaves. Two big ones for the plates, two littler ones for the teacup saucers, and two little ones will be mint embellishments for the teacups. I file the top of the acorn caps a little, just so they aren't super pointy, and I use liquid sculpty for the tea. Cookies and toadstools. Fairies like sweets, especially chocolate. Check the description below for a polymer clay chocolate chip cookie tutorial and also check there for my toadstool mushroom tutorial. I use liquid Sculpey to secure each miniature onto the tabletop, except the teapot. Baking time. Tin foil in a muffin pan keeps my toadstool nice and straight. You might want even more tinfoil than I used, just to make sure the toadstool doesn't move around while baking. I bake at 275 degrees for 30 minutes. While that's baking, I make the little stools. I use hot glue and add some dried moss. I also add a garden spoke. I use acrylic paint loaded with lots of water and wash it over the spool for that aged look. It was looking way too shiny new. After baking, I use Fabri-Tac to secure the acorn teapot to the table. I didn't want that to go in the oven because the hot glue would melt again and the teapot would have come undone. The finishing touches are always my favorite part of the creative process. I use brown, red, and white acrylic paint and give the fairies tea an irresistible, creamy, swirly look. If I wanted to keep this set outdoors, I'd cover the whole thing with this stuff. Verathane. I'd use a paintbrush and carefully apply five thin coats, letting each coat dry before the next coat. I'd add the varnish to the entire thing, even the dried moss cushions on the stools. So let's recap the most importantest tips. 
Verathane. It's known far and wide to work well with polymer clay. Five thin coats. Emphasis on thin. Paintbrush. I hear the spray kind will sometimes not work properly with polymer clay. Bring it inside for the winter. Wait, I didn't mention that before, so therefore it can't be a recap. If you'd like me to make a future video about making your DIY fairy garden accessories weather resistant, please leave a comment and let me know. Sometimes I can't sleep at night because I've got so many ideas for more fairy garden miniatures and I really want to bring imagination to your life. So hit that subscribe button and 